We've been growing cannabis outdoors for a long, long time. Long enough to understand all the arguments for growing in the sun. It truly is wonderful, enriching experience, but some of the benefits, especially the benefits to your wallet, might really surprise you. Hi there, welcome to How to Grow Cannabis Outdoors with Nikki Lestretto and Swami Chaitanya. You cannot underestimate the joy of growing cannabis outdoors. First and foremost, it's the delight of being out in nature, watching your girls grow. You literally get recharged by putting your hands in the earth, savoring and smelling the soil, feeling the sun on your face, the wind blowing through your hair, and the birds singing in the trees. Growing your own cannabis often inspires you to grow other flowers and vegetables too. The whole process puts you in intimate contact with the weather and the seasonal cycles of nature, a connection most of us have either lost or never experienced at all. There are real practical deep benefits from growing cannabis outdoors, not least in the quality of the buds you can produce. First, you know there are no pesticides because you didn't use them. Second, you know the produce is organic because you know everything you put into the soil. Third, the plants are grown as nature intended out in the elements and under the sun. The effect this has on the finished bud is extraordinary, as any cannabis connoisseur will agree. There are benefits to the environment too. You can produce your own compost teas, amend your own organic soil, and employ only sustainable, regenerative techniques. You won't need powerful grow lights burning 18 hours a day. You won't need expensive cooling and airflow systems or air conditionings. For many gardeners, all you need is your seeds. Mother Nature provides the rest. Right, Tipo? If that's not enough to convince you, think about your wallet. At the time of recording, most Americans are paying upwards of 35 to 50 bucks an eighth. With little choice at cultivar and no real clue in many cases about how the plant was grown and what sort of additives and chemicals were used. You can save a fortune growing your own cannabis, a far superior product for a much lower price. Learning how to grow cannabis outdoors is magical and rewarding, but it's not for everyone. You need the right climate and weather. You need the right space, and you need to be sure you're physically ready for the challenge. More importantly, you need to do it legally. We want you to grow your own, of course, but we don't want you breaking the law. We're very lucky at Ganjama Farms to have a big space for our sun-grown cannabis, but you don't need a huge farm with acres of land to grow outdoors. If you have a small balcony with enough room for a potted plant, you can start growing. Ideally, your climate should be Mediterranean style. Hot summer, mild fall, very little rain. Pretty much all cannabis plants do well in this climate, especially your longer flowering sativas. If you live in colder regions with short summers, then indica leaning or fast flowering plants are far more suitable. Auto flowering hybrids will suit even shorter summers as their entire cycle lasts on average only around 10 to 12 weeks. The weather is also important. Your plants will really suffer in high winds and monsoon style rains, no matter what the average climatic conditions. If you want to grow somewhere prone to adverse weather, you'll need to protect your plants accordingly. Another question you need to ask yourself is, am I fit enough? Do I have enough spare time? Even a few pots on a terrace will require basic maintenance and upkeep. Pruning, feeding and watering, working the soil, preparing feeds and foliars, these are all necessary to ensure a successful crop, and they do take time. Finally, has your state legalized cannabis cultivation? Even if it has, you still need to abide by local laws and regulations. In most states, you'll need to make sure your plants are out of public sight, with a locked gate or fence for security. As our good friend Kyle Cushman always says, don't break the law, change the law. Well, we love winter at Ganjama Farms. The jars are full, the soil gets recharged under a cool moon, and by the time we hit the solstice in the winter, we're at the apex of our tilt from the sun. 
nature's resting. For us, this means long nights sitting by the fire, discussing what will grow next year. No need to rush such an important decision. The biggest questions for outdoor growers relate to climate, flowering time, regular and feminized cannabis seeds. We always grow using regular seeds, but FEMS are great too, especially for beginners. With FEMS, you don't have to worry about separating the males or accidentally pollinating your entire crop, but you also don't get the pollen. Feminized seeds are easier to work with, sure, but we're old hippies and we like doing things the traditional way, as nature intended. Those flies. So those growing in the northern U.S. states have briefer summers, so should pick hybrids with shorter flowering times. You're mostly looking for indica or indica-dominant cultivars, but the further north you grow, the quicker the flowering time needs to be. Homegrown has a superb range of fast flowering and auto flowering seeds, with some autos completing their entire cycle in under three months. That is perfect for quick, cooler summers. Fortunately, we have long, hot and dry summers at Ganja Ma Farm, so we can choose pretty much any cultivar we want, no matter how long they take in flower. This is why we pick cultivars with a good spread of flowering times, letting us stagger out harvest and maximize space in our drying room. Besides sunlight, you need to think about humidity and rainfall. If it's very wet and humid where you live, you'll do well to choose a cultivar with good mold and mildew resistance. Sativas show great natural resistance to these problems with smaller, well-spaced buds, allowing more ventilation and quicker drying. Most of the decision-making process is all about personal taste. What's important to you? Do you want cannabis high in CBD, like Harlequin? Or are you growing for recreation? Do you want huge yields from something like Big Bud? Or does the THC range matter more? And then you have the huge choice of flavors, aromas, and effects. Oranges, blueberries, bananas, physical effects, cerebral, trippy, happy, sleepy, calming, creative. I could go on for months. And that's usually how long it takes to pick our next bunch of seeds. Okay, here's a recap. So why learn to grow cannabis outdoors? Being out in nature generally enriches your life. The quality of outdoor sun-grown cannabis is far higher than anything you could produce indoors, at least we think so. Growing outdoors is much healthier for the environment. You have a wider choice of cultivar, especially when shopping at homegrown. Growing cannabis outdoors can save you thousands of dollars per year. That's a heavy smoker. <clears throat> but before you even think about growing outdoors, ask yourself these questions. Is it legal? Do you have enough space? Do you have the right climate? The right weather? And are you physically ready? The answer is yes to all. You're ready to embark on the greatest adventure of your life. This episode will give you an overview of the Outdoor Cannabis Grow Calendar and what to expect month by exciting month. Hey home growers, I'm Parker Curtis from Homegrown Cannabis Co. Thanks for watching How to Grow Cannabis Outdoors with Nikki and Swami. If you want to grow cannabis outdoors, grab your seeds over at homegrowncannabisco.com, use our promo code SWAMI10 for a 10% discount on our amazing seeds and start growing your own homegrown and sun-grown cannabis. See you in the garden.